Let's head back to school and figure out just which clicks our Minnesota Wild players belong in. Plus, we check in with the Minnesota Warriors and make a pretty big on-ice commitment. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Talk North, Green Belt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 192. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? Episode 192 of Far Down Beauties. Jesse Pierce, Kirsten Kroll. I am coming to you from the lovely Fragans Resort as I follow Matt Boldy around on a golf course on his first PGA Tour. We're recording this a little bit early. We're recording it on a Friday because it's Labor Day weekend. We have things to do, Kirsten. We've got lives outside of hockey, but we're bringing you some great content today. we got the Minnesota Warriors joining us. But, uh, Kirsten, what do you got planned for the Labor Day weekend? I have a lot. Well... I've I've really lived it up this past week. I went to the state fair, of course, did my due diligence. Um, I didn't go into Young Gravy. Me and my friend decided against it because we're like, we don't really want to spend money on that. So we stood outside the grandstands and could hear him. So technically we were there, but yeah. also like, you know, you, you do what you got to do. Um, So I did the state fair, did the whole deal, was at my very first gopher football game last night. So that was fun. Now I'm going to work all week. I don't want to mention that you very erroneously took a shot at the gopher hockey program, which wasn't very nice. I didn't take do, a shot like... at them. I said, I won't cheer for gopher hockey, but I will cheer for any of their other sports. Knowing no, the backstory that, that I'm a St. Cloud State Husky, it makes sense. No, I don't think that that's allowed. So I think it is allowed. And people from St. Cloud did agree with me. They're like, yeah, that is valid. As long as you're not cheering for gopher hockey. I was like, thank you. So anyways, coming out of a fun week, working all weekend. And then I'm doing that because I took the whole week off for my birthday week. So such a Gen X thing to do. Just, you know, a whole week of birthday. It's all about me this week. (laughs) Exactly. No, I everyone tell me happy birthday. No, just kidding. Like, I love those memes. Everyone's like, everyone tell me happy birthday or I'll cry. (laughs) My happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to go cry. I know. Uh, no, I've got, I'm working all week as well. Come catch me out at loggers during this week. And then my little one, my oldest little one has little wild starting this week and he goes to kindergarten on Thursday, which leads me to today's episode content. School started school, back to school, all fun. It's almost back to the rink, which is going to be very exciting. Uh, Connor Bedard, I know last week we mentioned he may or may not be at the prospects tournament. He will be at the prospects tournament. So go crazy more information to come about that. But uh, no, since school has started, I wanted to do kind of like a fun look at the Minnesota Wild players and maybe like what they would be in high school or like, you know, whether they were voted most talkative or whatever. Like, what for instance, my first example comes to mind. Brandon Duhame. He is like the badass, right? He's the, he's the kid that's just kind of a little dangerous, a little wild, maybe wears a leather jacket and smokes a cig. Uh, that's very 50s but that's what I'm thinking right I yeah. you know, him will go that for example Matt Boldy the quarterback of the varsity team that everyone loves Marcus Foligno prom king those immediately come to mind Connor Dewar emo for sure uh, <laughs> <laughs> no that one was good <laughs> thank you thank you I oh, there's actual tears in my eyes. That one, <laughs> he should have known, but it's so true. It's so true. I know. I was like, is that mean? It's not mean. It's just, it's facts. He would for sure be emo. Shops at Hot Topic all the time. Probably spiky necklace and dark circles oh. around his eyes. What I, you got? What you got? Um, Duhame, I would agree with you on track with that. I would say most likely to skip class because he just kind of gives off that yes. vibe. Um, yes. best smile <laughs> award. I would give it to Flurry. I know during Butte's awards. Oh, yeah. Like, I know during Butte's awards, I gave it to Jewel Erickson. Eck. 
<laughs> I don't know terrible. why, but I mean, most likely to like smile at you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's fair. Mark Andre Fleury. Just a happy go lucky guy. Um, most likely to be a backup singer on Taylor Swift's tour, Jonas Brodeen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I could put him in the category for like best eyes. Oh my Oops. gosh, yes. Yeah, Taylor we'll Swift has a lyric about blue time. eyes too. So maybe, yeah. <laughs> I challenge you. There's gonna be one episode where there's no Taylor Swift mentions, and I'm just curious when that happens. It's probably a um, year down the road, but the last two episodes, I wasn't the one that brought it up. So that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I know it's just seeping into my brain and into my conversations these days. It I know it just it happens that way. Like it just you don't plan for it. It just you wake up one day and then all of a sudden it's all you talk about. Kirill Kaprizov is the what is Kaprizov, you think? That's a tough one. Um, mm, most likely to become a CrossFit champion is what I see. Because I remember oh. that off-season video of him in Russia <gasps> just flipping these monster truck tires. In the rain? And yes. In the mud? So most likely to like be a CrossFit national champion is what I envision for him. I like, I like that. Pat Maroon bully for sure bully i was gonna say most likely to uh, win a beer drinking contest (laughs) can you you can do that in high school in canada no but i feel kids would still try to write that down most likely to join a frat yeah to be a a fraternity president (laughs) yes i like that um jared spurgeon Oh, then we'll go to Jewel. I love talking about Jewel just as much as I like talking about Taylor Swift. Jewel sometimes reminds me of a cartoon character a little bit. So there's got to be. <laughs> oh, I need you to stop. <laughs> stop with the accuracy or what? Most likely to kill somebody with just a look. <laughs> Jewel Erickson. <laughs> terrifying. What kind what? of superlatives? That sounds terrifying. Well, no, everyone says he has a punchable face. Just the way he looks at people i don't know that's true spurge is like most likely to join a musical maybe or something very no i was gonna say like something to do with like straight a's like most likely to get a 36 on his act yeah i like that i like that and you know he's in the part of the popular crowd but that's just because he's friends with the popular people like he's just kind of that guy that's there Yes, exactly. Again, not to be, this isn't to be mean, but that seems like what he would be. That's where he'd fit. Uh, Zuki. Most likely to be the best man at your wedding. <laughs> I like that. Mostly Who else are we missing? Like we're missing Midzy. A lot. Of, Midzy. Midzy. <laughs> I was going to say, I, that one's not funny though, because you usually do this your senior year. I was going to say most likely to grow a full on mustache by the time he's entering middle school, but he already confirmed that was a true story. Most, most likely to be a stunt man. Oh. Like I could just see him jumping in and just kind of being like a uh, crazy, like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I see that you too. Yeah, yeah. I like that. One. I could see that. Who else are we missing? Faber. Ah, Brock. Hmm. Brock. I don't know him. Most likely to coach your kids' baseball team. <laughs> this one's so gym dumb. Teacher. Most was... likely to be a gym teacher. I still tie him so tightly to college. I'm like, most likely to be the top supporting booster. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's fair. And it a is top supporting just... booster, a, a platinum tier. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like that. Uh, Gus. Gus. Likely to burn a frozen pizza. Best dog dad. Is he? I don't know. I think he has dogs. Does he have a dog? I thought he has dogs. (laughs) I don't know. That one would have gone to Dumba, RIP. It would have gone to Dumba. It would have gone to Dumba. We love a Mm. man who loves his dogs. Um, I feel like we're missing Mm. like a big name. Ryan Hartman. Ryan Hart. Oh. Hmm. Most likely to sell drugs in an alleyway. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say most likely to get caught smoking in the bathroom. Definitely smoking in the bathroom. We'll go that. That's a nicer version. Yeah. Of it. Oh my God. I didn't say bad drugs. It could just be weed. 
true it's legal here now it's legal here now so um, yeah i feel like there's still like a big name we're missing maybe not freddie goudreau yeah freddie most likely to swoon you at the eiffel tower oh uh, but okay i keep thinking he's european and he's very canadian but i could he's see very that very canadian because i he's keep very thinking French he's canadian. european yeah he's not french canadian yeah See, this is fun this is good content this was fun it just once it just started flowing I know. We want to hear what you guys think. Drop them down below. You know the spiel. Let us know where we were accurate. Let us know where we were inaccurate. Obviously, emo doer was the winner <laughs> of today's cover. <laughs> because you can picture it so clearly. I will never get over it. I'm never going to get over <laughs> that. That made my life. You're welcome. You're welcome. Just a little chuckle for your weekend. Uh, We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be joined by the Minnesota Warriors. Stay tuned. Hey, guys. Jesse Pierce here with some exciting news to share. Livia Weight Control Centers was just named Minnesota's best weight loss program for the third year in a row. That's three years of gold standard, 14 years of changing lives. Celebrate with Livia today by joining and getting three months absolutely free. With Livia's doctor-recommended program, you could lose up to 10 pounds or more in your first two weeks. Look at me. I am down over 20 pounds and counting. Cannot believe how Livia has changed my life, not only physically, mentally, and emotionally as well. Join Livia today. Visit Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA to get started on your weight loss journey today. They're the gold standard. Join up, sync up, have a great rest of your summer. Mention my name when you visit Livia and start your weight loss journey today. And joining us now, we've got some gentlemen from the Minnesota Warriors. Boys, how are we doing today? Oh, doing great. Doing good. Yeah. Doing Yourselves? Good. Can't, Can't complain. complain. It's, it's, a, it's a holiday weekend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you know, first of all, tell everybody who's unfamiliar with what the Minnesota Warriors are. Explain a little bit the background of the Warriors and what they kind of represent and their ultimate organizational goal. Yeah. So the Minnesota Warriors were founded about... Uh, 10 years ago. I won't go way too much into detail about that, but our founder was Andy Qualley. Uh, He was injured while deployed and got sent to Walter Reed out in the DC area. And Walter Reed used hockey as a rehab kind of to come back from injuries and stuff like that program. So when Qualley came back to Minnesota, uh, he kind of looked to expand off of that to find veterans who had VA disability ratings uh, qualifying them as disabled veterans to use that to make a team and, and get them back on the ice and stay physically active. And uh, he reached out to uh, the Minnesota National Guard and found that there was only like eight veterans in the whole state that were, you know, disabled. And so then he he got with USA Hockey and opened up the parameters to make it so more veterans essentially could join and so what we are now, uh, what we've come today, 10 years later, is a nonprofit that has uh, three regions across the state of Minnesota and over 300 players. Uh, so we're the metro region. Uh, we also incorporate Rochester and Mankato. And then we have Duluth, which includes the Iron Range and then St. Cloud. So we're, we're a growing program and we play hockey, obviously. You know, it's fun to skate yeah. around, practice once a week. We get to go travel to tournaments, but the real thing at the end of the day that the Warriors brings to the table is that camaraderie, getting that feeling back of being in around guys and gals that were in the military have gone through some of the same stuff that you've gone through and having peer support and, and helping with that mental health aspect for, for us veterans. So that's kind of a snapshot of what we are and what we do. I think you nailed it, buddy. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it a time or two. <laughs> yeah. And the biggest thing uh, for us is, uh, you know, uh, the mental health aspect is number one in this program because that's, you know, depending on what they've experienced when they've been deployed or in service or even out of service, they might be a little apprehensive to go to and sit down with a psychologist or a counselor. And so this way, you know, we're all getting together and just talking amongst, our, amongst ourselves, the things that we've been going through, it's a lot easier to talk about than it is sitting down with a stranger one-on-one and doing it. And then we get to play hockey on top of that. So that's just, you know, icing on the cake, pun intended. (laughs) (laughs) That's absolutely tremendous. I mean, and just kind of how, yeah, like 
people use hockey as kind of that outlet and it feels like that's what you guys are, you know, not even just hockey sports in general, right. Provide this outlet. I mean, how free and what's your guys' hockey background and experience and are the levels all different of those that are a part of Minnesota warriors? Yeah. So we have all, all levels um, in the Metro. So I'll just use the Metro. For example, we have three levels of teams. Our, our white team is kind of our top tier team. Uh, Heard is one of the white team members here. Uh, so that's kind of the guys that played high school, a little bit of juniors, maybe. I think we got a couple of guys who played in, in college uh, before they chose to join the military. Uh, we have a mid-level team, which is our green level team, which Kayla and I are on. Uh, you know, we're not as fast as we used to be, maybe put on a few extra pounds or don't have the skating ability we used to. And then we have our black level team, which is a lot of guys who are new to hockey. Uh, so we really encourage veterans who have never played before to, to come out and play. Uh, we have an awesome... Uh, resource United Heroes League, which is down in Hastings, uh, which actually helps provide equipment for for veterans. Uh, they, they can go in there, uh, get a whole bag of equipment. Uh, a lot of it's donated by other hockey players ar around the state and Bauer donates some gear. And so we encourage anyone who's a veteran to come out and play. And we got some guys I know uh, we were just in St. Louis, for example, in April. And we had a guy who'd been on the ice for three months went out for nationals. I think a puck deflected off his like butt or off his leg or something into the back of the net, you know, like the typical, you know, oh, it just went off of me and then the net kind of thing, but he scored a goal while we were out at nationals and they went on to, to win nationals. And, you know, that's a cool story for him. And, uh, and a, what better way to start your hockey career than scoring, scoring a goal in nationals, whether, you know, bounces off you or you shoot it. So all different yeah. levels of, of playing. Uh, personally, I grew up playing in the Blaine Hockey Association. Uh, so wasn't the greatest player. I was over. I like to say I was overshadowed by Bukestead and Brodsey. I was in yeah, that, that happens. of the of the <laughs> Bengals. So overshadowed a little bit. Um, but I've played my whole life, and uh, you know I just love it. Yeah, uh, same for me. I grew up playing since I was about uh, yay high. <laughs> And just been playing ever since. Um, uh, played high school, Wishasaga Lakes, uh, Centennial a little bit. Joined the military. Played with a bunch of old CCCP guys down in uh, Sacramento, California. Uh, played a little club hockey with um, UC Davis down there. Um, and so just just love getting out there and playing, you know. Hey, yeah. You know, would love to get paid for it, but this is the closest <laughs> we're gonna get. And, <laughs> We just enjoy the game. It's, you know, there's nothing like it. You get out there and the day just melts away. Anything that's going on. And after that, you don't have to worry about it. You're with great friends and great, you know, veterans and everything. Rank doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a general in the military at the time or an airman basic or a private first class. Everybody's the same. Everybody served. And that's what we are. We're just straight veterans a hockey club, a team, and a family. Are you going to tell about your hockey since you're a ringer? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that can raise on his backhand. I yeah. Oh, man. I wouldn't say that. that used... but I'm the yeah. old guy at the group here, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I played a, a lot, you know, since I was a child, too. And, um, you know, I played only one year of high school and thought working was the better, uh, route to go and you know that's one of the biggest regrets but you know <laughs> it happens and then uh you know I joined the military and it was hard to skate in the military too um not a lot of ice to find in Italy or anything like that so um but you know came back and was fortunate enough to run into somebody um who was with the Warriors and recruited me to the program and it's been great for the record, for the buckle, they don't ask how, they just ask how many. That's what Marcus Foligno has always told us, because I believe he's he scored the same way. <laughs> I agree with that. Exactly. You just got to put them on the board. I'm more of an Apple guy myself, so. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, those are just as important, you know? I was just going to yeah. say, you need those guys too. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> question that I have for you guys. It seems like there's just a lot of great things that you guys are doing and a lot of great things that you've taken away personally from this. I'm just wondering what your favorite moments from being a part of the Warriors has been. That's a loaded question. I yeah, know. I, that's usually how I come I, in I, right I, away in the morning. I haven't even had my coffee yet and I'm just going for it. We're not allowed to talk about nationals as your favorite moment. Uh, we're not allowed to talk about that. So uh, side story real quick. I, uh, I, 
I actually played for the Dallas Warriors. So there's warrior programs all over, all over the country. Uh, and the, the Dallas Warriors, I guess this is kind of one of my favorite moments too, even though it's not Minnesota. Uh, my, one of my training buddies who I went to school with way back and over a decade ago plays for the Dallas Warriors. So I got to play with him and played against Horta here in the nationals. And we played against each other in the national championship. I was playing for Dallas and him for Minnesota. And, uh, I might have been a minus three that game. Might have been. <laughs> I got a phantom hand on the puck in the crease penalty too. But uh, the game tying goal, I, I, I'm a defenseman. I deflected it right in the air to him and he back door wide open, put it in to tie up the, the game. So that's one of his favorite moments and one of my least favorite. So moments. the <laughs> important thing is Minnesota beat Dallas. Let's just go with that then. That's what we're saying. Minnesota yeah, beat Dallas. Best yeah. Dallas. That's the focus yeah, there. Thank definitely. you for that. <laughs> but no talking about the moments I mean there's been so many cool opportunities and and moments that come with the Warriors uh a bunch of us put together a, a charity team a couple weeks ago I think we were all Minnesota Warriors except for we had like one civilian on the team we played in a tournament for Rhett Syndrome Foundation it was down at Minnesota Made uh in Edina and uh, one of our teammates daughters actually has Rhett Syndrome so it was cool we had really cool purple jerseys with Rapunzel on because that was her favorite princess. And, you know, we weren't wearing the warrior Jersey, but we all knew we were warriors and we got to go skate in that and have fun with that. And we actually, our first game, we got to play against Matt cook. He was on the other team oh, and uh, we beat him, I think like seven to three and our whole bench is just you know, running our mouths at Matt <laughs> cook all game and <laughs> letting him have it and just, you know, chirping away. And it, it was just, it was just a fun experience to, you know, get to play against some old NHL guys, you know, Cook can still fly, but, you know, it, it's it's fun and you get that opportunity because of the program. I know last year, the Minnesota Warriors were involved with uh, the Minnesota Blue Ox. They played a fighting for freedom game where all the money raised went to veterans fighting PTSD. And a bunch of those guys got to skate with like Walls and uh, Nate Prosser, Ryan Carter was up there. Uh, Neil Broughton was there for a little bit. Uh, bunch of guys were out there and that, that was a super cool experience for them i was i'm seeing the event so i didn't get to skate with the guys they they left me on the bench but you know even being a part of that was a cool experience for myself to be around some of those guys and and get to kind of talk to them on a more low-key you know atmosphere and stuff like that so a lot of cool experiences what about you guys yeah um yeah there's been a lot of experiences uh before when i first got into the program i wasn't rostered on a minnesota team so I had the experience of playing in my first nationals here up in Blaine, Minnesota with the Hendricks foundation tournament. Um, and I was playing for Nebraska. Uh, their goalie at the time had to leave because uh, his mother died and that team was seated in the wrong, uh, I guess, division. And in three games, I think I saw close to 180 shots. <laughs> oh, <boy. So. laughs> Yep, I think I lost about 30 pounds between those three games, but um, just the guys there, never met them before, and they just brought you in like a family, and, you know, we stay in touch to the, this day. I mean, this past year at Hendrickson, um, they were out, they came and, you know, hanging out with us afterwards, grilling and having a few, uh, you know, adult pops, and <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was I mean just the opportunities to hang out with everybody and share stories and then you know playing hockey and getting the opportunities to you know to go down to St. Louis or Pittsburgh or Colorado you know you're not going to be able to do that unless you're you know college bound or juniors or even professional and not really have to pay much for it you know it's mm -hmm. the opportunity with our organization and banking on you know a lot of the donors and our sponsors that are contributing to the program that actually helps us play hockey but also helps helps us stay mentally healthy as well i mean and that's the the biggest thing that i'm taking away from this right it's kind of removing that stigma especially gi joe military men and hockey is a very macho stigma but like you mentioned it's kind of removing that because you guys all everyone has their own battles right and everyone has their own struggles and to have that opportunity to share that and kind of open up a little bit with your teammates has to be pretty special. Oh yeah, it definitely is. It's for me personally, it's, um, it's, it's, it's actually helped me a lot fighting some demons that I've gone through in the military in the past and being around people. And, you know, 
ever since I've gotten out of the military, it's been, they don't really tell you how to adjust to civilian life or back into civilian life. It's basically, all right, thanks. Here you go. Have a great day. And, you know, to make those friends and connections and to be able to um, understand one another, it's hard to do without somebody that's actually experienced it, um, you know. And so it's great being around people that actually get you. What events do we have coming up or how can, if there is a military vet that maybe had never heard of Minnesota Warriors and now wants to become involved, how can people get involved and, and where they where can they come watch you guys uh, do your thing, butt goals and all? <laughs> butt goals and all. Uh, so we have our next tournament, unfortunately, is out in Colorado. So, you know, unless some of you Minnesotans want to go on a, a road trip, um, we don't have any any home games coming up right now. But the easiest way really to get get plugged in with us is get on our website. You just go online, look up Minnesota Warriors hockey. Uh, there's a, a registered uh, little portal there. They can hop on that and, and, and get out and come to some practices. I think we have a practice, what is it? September 23rd. Uh, it's a Saturday at 7 PM, I believe. Yeah. All our practices are on our website too. Um, yeah. So they can go to the calendar function and, you know, even if they haven't registered with the program and just want to come out and hang out and, you know, see what it's about and talk to any one of us. Hey, come on and join us. I mean, yeah. we're all over. I mean, we're at Ken Yackle, we're at Blaine, we're at Pleasant, we're down in Bloomington, we're here at West St. Paul, we're at Braemar. So, I mean, we are all over the 694, 494 <laughs> corridor uh, trying to get practices in anytime we can. Yeah, 7 p.m. Bloomington Ice Garden. Uh, it's a Saturday night. Bring the family, bring the kids, all that it's the easiest way to come out and support us just come watch us otherwise you know like he touched on earlier a little bit uh we we really try to make the hockey affordable for the veterans too so mm -hmm. uh being a nonprofit, we really rely on our sponsors and, and donations from individuals uh because we pay for all the ice time so the veterans aren't coming out and getting an ice bill so we'll practice weekly in the metro all that ice time is covered by the the board and the the organization and then when we travel that's that's covered too. So we are sending a team out or is going out to Denver, Colorado for the warrior classic in, was that beginning of October? October. Yeah. yeah October, beginning yeah. of October. And that team we're sending out there, we're paying their airfare. We're paying for their hotel to get out there. So, you know, really they're only responsible for feeding themselves once a day because the team will buy dinner for them and, and stuff like that. And so, you know, it's not really an opportunity to get in hockey. Hockey is an expensive sport. Uh, so we really, really try to make it affordable. So that cost isn't deterring anyone. So that's really the, the best way to, to support us. And then we have a coffee that's online. Also, uh, we sell mm. bags of coffee, warrior freedom beans, and the pro proceeds from that go back to the program too. And that's the easiest way to support us is come out and watch us and, and just get involved. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody yet, um, has any questions and stuff like that they can always hit us up on facebook or instagram or anything like that and you know somebody will respond within an hour or so so yeah i mean yeah. our opportunities and you know i might say oh wow these veterans get to you know travel everywhere and do everything this organization wouldn't exist without all the donors small businesses to large businesses alike if they didn't support us and if they weren't donating to our our organization we wouldn't exist um, we only exist not only just from the member driven but also the do donors and businesses within the communities around the entire state of minnesota that helps us keep going and that's huge well, it's a tremendous organization. We are so honored to have you guys on to share it. Obviously, we will spread the good word of yep. Minnesota Warriors, as always, on all of our social channels as well. And thank you guys for sharing the information about Minnesota Warriors. And thank you for your service as well. Obviously, and, um, very honored. So, you know, if and we also, you know, other than just supporting us, we also like to, you know, support other communities. We're helping Worthington. Um, we're in the works there trying to save their arena. So we're going down there and trying to help them do a fundraiser event to save their arena and save their youth program. Um, we have a charity game up with on October 28th um, in recognition of a fallen brother um, that was part of SWAT and with uh, Infragro Police Department as well. 
and he left three dollars behind and so all the proceeds are going to them and i know elise can speak a little bit to that as well if you don't mind at all of course elise welcome <laughs> hi um, I'm Elise. I actually work with the West St. Paul Police Department and we work, we partner with, we're hosting the charity hockey game and we partner with Invergrove Heights and South St. Paul Police to kind of put this all together. And um, Officer Ben Badon, who was an Invergrove Heights police officer who passed away kind of unexpectedly at the end of April. And he's been a part of our charity games for the last five years. He's played in other veteran tournaments. He's an army veteran, um, kind of all the things. And so this year when the opportunity came up for our charity game, um, we decided we wanted to help support him and his family, his wife and three kids who he left behind. So this year, all the proceeds from our game are going to be going directly to his family through the Northern Dakota County Beyond the Yellow Ribbon Foundation. Yeah. And I've played Absolutely. With him for probably the last year and mm -hmm. a half before he passed away. And I've played with mm -hmm. Elise on the mm -hmm. ice as well, too. So we have, uh, uh, other than the Warriors, obviously, we all play a lot of other hockey, but mm -hmm. we do a cop skate uh, every Monday night. Mm -hmm. And so I'm with all of them playing or trying to play and keep up with them. They're a lot younger than me, but. <laughs> well, it doesn't mean much better. <laughs> hey, you're talking to two girls that can barely skate, yet we won't be in the hockey, so. <laughs> we, we try, we try. But yeah, that's that's another opportunity that, that kind of comes out of the Warriors is we really get to give back to the to the community. Uh, we get to to help out other veterans and other organizations such as, you know, the police, firefighter, all those organizations, youth hockey associations, uh, I know our St. Cloud program does a lot of scrimmages against uh, youth association coaches yep. and and stuff like that. And it's it's you know growing the game. Yep. We all got to work together to, to grow it. And I love it. Well, again, you guys be sure to check out Minnesota Warriors. Find out all of their information on their website. We'll share that out. Excited for the 28th game, and then looking forward to more information about that December game as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us, and uh, we look I forward to seeing you at a ring. Yeah, I got a quick question for you, ladies. Yeah, how do we get oh you? Boy. How do we get you two out on the ice for one of our practices to come run some oh, drills yes. with us? Um, I don't think it would take much. I think we would do it. No. Yes. <laughs> we would say yes. Jesse goes committed. No. Yeah. So <laughs> let's see the twenty third. Then you're coming out. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> make September twenty third. Yeah, we would love to see you out on the ice with us. You can meet more of the guys and gals from the program, and I mean, it, it's fun. It's it's super fun. We got one of our one of the ladies actually from. Uh, Mankato is, I think she's the captain of, we made an all women's team that we sent to nationals. It was from women all, from all over the country that made it a team that they had 11 skaters for five games. And maybe wow. we'll get her from for Mankato if, if you two ladies come out. We're in. Count us in. September 23rd, we will be there. Put it on your calendar. So now you guys have more reason to come check all of us out so you can laugh at Kirsten and I as we attempt to be hockey players that yeah. we so accurately judge but uh well thanks boy <laughs> thanks Perfect. so much again boys and uh yeah. we look forward to seeing you then at the end of September here Perfect. Right. thank you thank, thank, you. thank you appreciate it thank you guys we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break we'll be right back all right We're back. Thank you so much to the Minnesota Warriors for sharing their great stuff. I do. I love supporting organizations like that. I love the invite. September 23rd. Are you ready, Kurt? I I am ready. I don't think they're ready. I don't think they know no. what they asked for. Quite honestly, they're going to be like, oh, maybe we maybe we should have been like, maybe come like watch. Maybe not we watch. practice. We could become like, a liability I very quickly. I feel like I should share videos with them to be like, here, just for reference, there we weren't playing up the lack of skill. There is a it's, severe lack of ability. <laughs> yeah, there quite literally is none. But it'll be a great experience. Again, go support them however you can. Go check out their organization. Uh, as always, we support all of our hockey folk here in the state of hockey and across the nation and around the world. We love it. Uh, that's going to do it. For this week's episode so we got don't worry hockey is back you guys there will be things to talk about oh. i think again prospects tournament oh, yeah. circled for the 15th 16th 17th at tria more information to come connor bedard in the house which should be interesting should i what should be my first question to connor bedard what am i tossing at him are you a swifty you got to break the ice i know to do I a know. light That's... icebreaker kind of want to ask about his quads oh my oh my god Remember when right? I pointed out that picture to you? Unreal. Yeah. Like, and now it's all anybody talking scary. about. Right? 
Yeah. And everyone yeah. at the time was like, Kirsten, that's so weird. And I'm like, you need to look for yourself. Like Intense. they're monster. They're like he's not monster. human. Like that lady on the plane no. who's pointing at the guy in the bag. That person right there is not real. He's not real. Oh, man, that's I, me when I see Connor Bedard. Not real. It's a little robotic too. That it's comes with the territory. I'm going to ask if he'd like to be called Con. Like we already call Connor. David no, Con. we need a new nickname for him. Bedsy? Mm, I don't know yet. We'll see this Connor more than we see the other one. So maybe he yes. gets Con. Mm. Yeah. But then how do we explain that to Con? I know it's going to be tough. I will. I'll have to break the news, but I'm sure he'll move on. Yeah. I mean, it, he'll be like, he'll be like, who are you again? He'll be like, don't worry about it. Con. But that's, what that's happens? So classic Con. What happens if Con leaves the Edmonton Oilers? He made a very ominous comment <laughs> the other week. Did he? What did he say? Something about like three year contract extension or something is like nearing something about his contract. Like, and how uh, when it comes time to like it being up, he's like, it just comes with the business. Like I've been here like X amount of years. Like he's tried, he's given you all he has. He like made the comment, like, we'll be looking at things. He's like, it's the nature of the business was essentially yeah, what he said. So I think he's leaving Edmonton when he, not came. everybody has to be Austin Matthews and commit to the team. So it's funny true. fact, his salary, which is now the highest paid salary, uh, AAV in the NHL is like 160th in the NFL, 101 in the NBA, 119 in the MLB. Isn't that wild? That is wild. No pun intended. But no, pun uh, intended. no, I take it back. Somebody who does have to commit to the franchise, Kirill Kaprizov, he needs to be Austin Matthews. He's oh, yeah. Everybody here. here in Minnesota. Yeah. Like yes. all of our superstars need to stay. Exactly. Yeah, like stay. they don't get an exemption. Con, no, we let Con just kind of do Con. At the end yeah of that's true that's just the conway uh <laughs> conway like charlie i was just charlie. gonna say mighty ducks baby i love it gosh what a great episode uh, i will also <laughs> say we talk about con mcdavid just as much as taylor swift on this podcast way too much for a podcast that has nothing to do with the edmonton oilers <laughs> yeah but it could <laughs> it could it could things could change con mcdavid there's probably room on the roster in two or three years for you. If you three years. There you go. We'll be Boom. waiting. Sign them. 13 year deal. Sign them. Uh, that worked out well last time, but uh, <laughs> that's going to do it for this week's episode. Keep an eye out for our season five promo video, which will drop this week. Very excited. We sacrificed a lot. As I mentioned last week, we sacrificed our bodies. We did. We in fact sacrificed a lot, but we survived it. Can't wait for you guys to see it, to sh- tell us that it was worth it. It was probably worth it. Yeah, I wasn't thinking straight. Clearly, when I was answering no. the questions, I wasn't thinking straight. I was not in my right I mind. Felt, I felt a little high. Like, I know we weren't, but it felt like a little, like something happened. There was a chemical the brain adrenaline. reaction in addition to, yeah, yeah, because it was terrifying. My brain was not mine. <laughs> no, definitely not. But uh, shout out to producer Fred for torturing us yet again in a promo video. We love it. Super excited for season five. Uh, as always, thank you to our partners, Soda Stick, Green Belt, Royal Credit Union, Livia, and Jim Beam, as well as our friends over at Talk North for supporting us. As always, thank you to you guys for supporting us. First Green Belt live show, September 25th in Woodbury at Ray J's. More information, I believe it's 6 p.m. out there. Can't wait to see you. First live show of the year presented by Green Belt. Super excited to get out to the bars, talk some hockey, drink some beer, enjoy because hockey season is here. Until next week. We'll see you later. Bye.